In this nugget, we're going to learn about autobiographies. An autobiography is the story of a person's life written by that person themselves. Whereas a biography would be the story of a person's life written by someone else. We're going to focus on autobiographies in this nugget. What's the purpose of an autobiography? An autobiography may be informative, as it gives you information about a person's life. It will often be entertaining, and it will be designed to interest or perhaps even inspire the reader. You should write an autobiography in the first person, using the pronouns I or we. And you should write an autobiography in the past tense. For instance, you might write, I was born in London in 1930. You may be asked to write an extract from an autobiography. If you are, don't try to write your whole life story. Pick an interesting event and write about that in detail. We're going to read an example of an autobiography written by a child who was evacuated during the Second World War. As we read, look for an example of each of the following. Do they use descriptive language to make their writing interesting? For instance, language devices such as similes, imagery and well-chosen vocabulary. Do they use structural devices for effect? Do they vary sentence starters, sentence structures and sentence lengths? Do they organise their writing using paragraphs? And do they use accurate spelling, punctuation and grammar? Before we read the example of an autobiography, let's read the glossary first. A glossary will explain some of the more sophisticated language in the text. This glossary tells us that rafters are the sloping wooden beams that support the roof, and that a rabble is a noisy crowd. So let's read this example of an autobiography. I was born in London in 1930. On the 1st of September 1939, when I was just nine years old, I was ripped away from everything I had ever known and evacuated to the countryside for my safety. Many children like us were encouraged to leave the cities where bombs were raining down, so we were labelled and packed off like parcels. My mother packed a small battered suitcase with all of the essentials I would need, including a gas mask, wrapped me up warmly in a thick dark coat, gave me a hug and a kiss, told me to take care of my little brother and waved me off at the train station. I was lucky enough to get placed in a home with my little brother. Not all children were so lucky and some were split up from their siblings. Having Thomas to look after was probably good for me as it gave me something to focus on other than my own homesickness. The family we were placed with were kinder than most but they had a large family of their own so they weren't overjoyed to have two more to add to the rabble. The mother looked like a picture book mother with doughy apple red cheeks but she had a personality that didn't quite match up. Always busy in the kitchen, if she caught you being bone idle, she would soon find something for you to do, from rolling pastry to digging and sowing herbs in the garden. Their small farm was constantly short-staffed, so the dad worked long hours and was a silent, severe figure whenever he was home, probably exhausted from the endless work. In those first few weeks, I was deeply miserable. Having grown up in the city, everything in the country was new, from the rolling green fields to the cows and sheep that populated these fields. The village children thought that we city kids were ignorant and laughed at us. I was a proud child and despised being laughed at, so I hated them with a bitterness I had never before experienced. At school, which was packed to the rafters, there was a clear divide between the village children and the evacuees. Now we're going to go through the model answer thinking about how it meets each of the items on this checklist. We're looking for descriptive language, varied sentence structures, paragraphs, accurate spelling, punctuation and grammar. Remember, these are good things to include in all types of writing, not just in an autobiography. This example uses descriptive language throughout, as we can see from the examples being underlined. It includes similes such as labelled and packed off like parcels, and adjectives such as small and battered to describe the suitcase. 
It includes alliteration in the phrase silent, severe figure. You should aim to use descriptive language if you're asked to write an extract from an autobiography. This example uses a range of sentence starters, sentence structures and lengths. Let's begin by looking at some of the sentence starters. You can see from the highlighting that they all start in different ways. To make your sentences interesting, it is important that your sentences begin in different ways. Some of the sentences begin with simple words like I, my, there and the. For example, I was born in London in 1930. This is fine so long as you don't start all your sentences in the same way. And some of the sentences start with ing verbs or subordinate clauses. For example, having grown up in the city, everything in the country was new, from the rolling green fields to the cows and sheep that populated these fields. Again, you wouldn't want all of your sentences to start in this way. It's important to vary it. Using a range of sentence starters will make your writing more interesting and engaging to read. Now let's look at some of the sentence structures and lengths. There are some short, simple sentences. For example, I was born in London in 1930. There are some longer, complex sentences, such as My mother packed a small, battered suitcase with all of the essentials I would need, including a gas mask, wrapped me up warmly in a thick, dark coat, gave me a hug and a kiss, told me to take care of my little brother, and waved me off at the train station. It is important that your work or your writing contains a variety of both, short, simple sentences and longer complex sentences. Using a range of sentence structures and lengths will make your writing more interesting and engaging to read. This example uses accurate punctuation. The most important thing in your writing is that punctuation is used accurately, even if it is just a full stop and a comma. However, you may want to push yourself and add a variety of punctuation, for example brackets and speech marks. You should only use punctuation that you are confident you can use accurately and that you've been taught to use in class by your teacher. These are good things to include in all types of writing, not just autobiography.